everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you guys are doing well if you're new here i'm lebogan and today i have another sit down video so in today's video as you guys have read from the title i'll be sharing how i was able to get into vet university so just a little bit of um, introduction i am currently doing my first year at the university of my daughter's rent and i am pursuing um, uh, the degree in bachelor of medicine and surgery which is MBBCH here at VET and it's a six year program and basically in this video I'm just going to share how I was able to attain a spot in this program because it is a competitive program but then I hope you guys enjoy this video and yeah let's get into it okay so I completed my matric in 2022 and I started applying throughout the year of 2022 and when I was going into the application process I already knew that I wanted to pursue medicine it was just kind of like a thing like I just want to do medicine in honest case because yeah I just wanted to do medicine and I applied to five universities in total I applied for the University of Gazul Natal, Sipago Mahato Health Science University, University of the Five Brothers Rand, UCT and University of Pretoria. So I applied to those five universities and my top three were number one was University of Cape Town, number two it was University of Pretoria and VET was actually number three. So that was how I was going um, into the application process. I was like, okay, I want to study medicine. These are my top three universities. I'm just going to apply to five so that the other two are just like um, something to fall back on. Okay, so then I started applying to those five universities. I applied. I, I paid the um, application fees where it's needed and I got confirmations that my, uh, my application, that they received my application on all of those things. And uh, for each university, I because most universities you have to choose like um, two um, two programs that you want to do, and some universities is three. But then um, the first one that I chose, my first choice was medicine, and then for the second choice, I chose something like biological sciences. I'm not sure, but then yeah, it was something like that, so that just in case I don't get into medicine directly, I can kind of like use jump to like go into medicine. So that was my how I was thinking when I was going through the application process. So I applied like that and then other universities I just applied for like dentistry and pharmacy just like as a backup. But then uh, that's how I went into the application process. Okay, so as I was in the midst of applying for universities, I was also applying for bursaries. So I think I only applied to two, which was like don't do that. I applied to at least five if you can find them. But for me personally, I was only able to find like two bursaries and that I could apply to because some of them it's either they were closed or like I didn't know. But then if you have any bursaries that you know, maybe you can leave them in the comments, you could help someone else out. But then yeah, I only applied to ISFAB and our municipality and a bursary where they like give you 30,000. I'm not gonna talk about this, but if you want to know more about them, you can just go to their website and check it out. But then, yeah, I applied for bursaries, I applied for university, and then the next step was to write my NBT test. Okay, so if you have written the NBTs or you know about the NBTs, there's basically two tests, which is the mathematics test and the AQL test, which the AQL comprises of two things, which is the quantitative literacy and the is it academic literacy, yeah, I think so. So and when you're doing medicine, you have to write both of them. You have to write both the AQL and the mathematics one. So basically, um, I went to write the NBT. I think it was 30th of July. Yeah, I made a vlog about it so you can go and check it out. And if you want tips regarding the NBTs, it's also in that video at the end. So you can go check that video out. But then I went and wrote the NBT at the University of Limpopo. We wrote there and then the results like took a while to come out. And I'm just gonna share my results because in the metric video, I don't think I shared them and there were some people were asking what I got. But yeah, basically, okay, I just have them on my phone here. Okay, so for the mathematics test, it was kind of like out of 100. Because I think all of them combined at 300, so each one is like 100, 100, 100. So for the mathematics test, out of 100, I was able to get 72. 
which is like 72 score and then 72 percent and then for the quantitative literacy one well, i was able to get 66 percent and then for the academic literacy i was able to get 70 percent okay so every time i was applying or writing something i was thinking about uct in my mind and for medicine you had to for nb2 results there had to be the intermediate range for uct and when i check here the intermediate range is for like mathematics it's from 37 to 68 um quantitative literacy it's 40 to 69 and the academic literacy was 35 to 68 so everything that I'm saying here is basically for the 2023 academic year, which was what I was applying for. So if you want, I don't know if they change it, but if you want to know for like 2024, you can download the 2024 prospectus to like kind of get um, the ranges in which they want people to be in. But for medicine, yeah, that was the range that you have to be in with your MBT scores. And for the uh, what's this? Uh, for the academic literacy test and the mathematics test i was able to fall into let me check i was it was not the intermediate range it was the yeah it was the proficient range so with those two i was like above the range that they needed but then with the with the quantitative literacy one i was like four four like four points below basically and something about UCT they really care about the NPT results so when I saw that I really got scared like I was scared that I maybe I wouldn't get into UCT because in my mind I was going to UCT there was nothing not even a single bit of bits in my mind it was either UCT if not UCT then UP okay that was all that I cared about so UP I mean bits kind of like a surprise but then I'll kind of explain more on how I ended up here but then yeah and yeah that's how I wrote the NBT results those were that's how I wrote the NBT test and those are my results and yeah okay so like a few I don't I think it's like a few weeks or a few months before I was going to write the final exam I got um, an email from University of Pretoria and unfortunately it was not good news so basically it was a rejection letter for my application for mppch and that really hit me hard because i was like because up was my second choice so in my head i was thinking like if i'm getting rejected from my second choice what about my first choice will i be able to make it that was what i was thinking i was so confused i was so scared i was crying like what's gonna happen now because you guys i remember i was busy on the youtube profile looking at um what's this looking at um races that i'm gonna apply for applying for races and all those things only to get a rejection later i remember i think i was in class even when i got that email and i opened it and it said you're not in my sister then I, I don't remember i think i i emailed them to inquire why i was why i was rejected and they told me that my grade 11 marks were not i guess they were not up to the bar that they were expecting for medicine students but then i was like just wait for the metric results i'll make you proud please but then they couldn't do anything i was rejected um, so i was scratching up off the list it was all up to it and uct now because the other two those are just backup plans okay yeah so that's like that and basically for my let me tell you guys what i got from my grade 11 results so for my grade 11 results i was doing seven subjects i got six distinctions okay i got six distinctions with one level five one level five for english with a distinction oh, guys eh? i was like so i basically lost my spot at up just because of one level five out of six distinctions i was like and my average i think it was like about 80 so i was like up is on their own league it's fine it was not meant to be there's nothing i can do i cannot go and put it nothing will happen i just have to accept that i'm not going to up then i accepted that i'm not going to up then i moved on and yeah that was basically what happened with up Yo, they rejected me guys they didn't even want to see my matrix results so i was just like anyways but then yeah 
it still makes me laugh to this day like how i got rejected from up anyways yeah but then that's it about my rejections i only got rejected to up and yeah in the midst of getting rejected by up like i never got like a conditional offer from any of the universities in medicine i got conditional offers for like biological sciences all of those things but then in medicine i, got a, I never got a conditional offer so i didn't know if i'm on the waiting list they're waiting for me like i didn't know they never said anything about medicine i was just like hoping for the best because i never got a conditional offer all of those things so yeah and i remember i got a conditional offer for like was it dentistry yeah and i didn't know whether to accept it or not because if i accept it then medicine comes out then i have to cancel this one and then maybe you know, like i was so confused didn't know what to do but i just let it be and yeah and yeah okay so after up rejected me i actually wrote my exams and January exams came out. I still haven't heard from any universities. They're all quiet, taking their own time to make a decision. It's fine. I'm just waiting with them. I'm waiting for universities to reply. I'm waiting for my metric results. It's like it's a whole thing. And yeah, basically, I'm just waiting for everything. And on the 20th of July, yo, on the 20th of January 2023, that was the day where our metric results came out. And on that day, I was also going for the provincial awards, for the Limpopo provincial awards. And I remember in the morning, I don't know if I saw the story in my metric video, but I remember in the morning when I saw that I got six to sanction back, I literally ran to my mom, like, I was like, mom, I'm going to UCT. I got seven distinctions. There's no way. There's no way UCT would reject me. That was how I was feeling. I was like, there's no way I am going to UCT. It was a done deal in my head so we got ready went to the provincial awards and yeah got the did all of those things i got awarded all of those things and then oh yeah actually only on the way to the provincial awards i remember we were in the car and we driving to polokwane so basically i got okay so okay let, let me just explain what happened with um Sifako Mahat. so yeah pets for Sifako Mahat, i played up i mean paid the application fee all of those things but then like the application was kind of like it was like they came to be honest like i was sending documents that they wanted they were not reflecting on the portal i was emailing them this was not like i was so stressed with sme because i was like up is not getting it's not allowing me in smu at least maybe when i like him but then guys i was sending documents they were not going through i was doing this it was not going through so smu was like a whole thing so i, I don't think i ever heard from them i don't know if they didn't get my thing oh yeah i remember I, I emailed them and they were like um the spots are full so i don't have, we don't have space for you because i don't know what happened with my application i never really um inquired at first why my application was not considered or anything but then yeah that's what happened with the same you but yeah as i was saying i was in the car on my way to the provincial awards and i got an an email from <laughs> i got an email from uct basically and it was an acceptance letter so yeah i got accepted to uct and yeah I, I, guys i'm so sorry that i don't have like um the pictures to show because i lost my old phone so like everything is gone but then yeah, I got an email saying that I've been accepted to medicine. I just need to accept their offer before this time is up. So yeah, and then that was happened. That's what happened with DCT. And then, like a few minutes after, I got an SMS. I got an SMS from Vets University. And what did they say? They say that I've been given an offer to study medicine at Vets, guys. I was like, you want to? And then what? You kiss it and say, look, now you're squeezing it in, baby girl. And what did they do? They sent me an off. I was like, hmm. All these universities want me. Yeah. At the time, I was like, you pee, you're really missing out. Like, okay, so like, and then I had those three offers. Like, I had those three offers. I'm going to the provincial awards. So I was like, blessings coming my way. Like, yo, guys, the month of January now. 
that month was just full of blessings so yeah we go to the provincial awards as i say we do all of those things and yeah but so basically when we came back from the provincial awards i think i had like three days um to decide whether i want to go to uct or vet and that was one of the hardest one of the hardest decisions that i have i had to make because i loved uct but i couldn't go because of financial reasons so at that time when i got those offers i didn't have a bursary and it didn't look too good not gonna lie so yeah, it didn't it didn't look good so i had to decide whether it's uct or vets and i ended up choosing vets only because between the two that's the cheaper option not that cheap not cheap by a large amount it's still expensive but it's expensive but then it was less expensive compared to uct so that's how i decided that i'm coming to it and as i was i think it was like my second week here um there was my municipality back home hosted like municipality awards and I was, I got position two. I was also in charge of the promotion award. So with those two, two things and also my maximum of those things, I was able to get a full bursary from my municipality. And it's like the first of its kind. So we were like the first people to get that kind of bursary. So I felt really, really grateful. And like everything was just falling into place. Cause if I had gotten that bursary, before I decided on which university I was going to, I was gonna go to UCT. But then for some reason I am here, I got the bursary after, so it was like kind of meant to be for me to be here at Fritz. That's how I look at it. And yeah, honestly I'm so grateful. Like I can just see how God worked. In like in, in the midst of everything. From getting rejected from UP, from get, from not getting a bursary, from having to make a decision from between UCT and U and Fritz and just like everything right out the way it needed to be so yeah that's how i got into vet university it was not my first choice it was actually my third choice but it ended up being where i ended up so sometimes things don't go to how you would have wanted them to go but then that might mean it's not the right decision because no, not that i'm here now guys i love it so much like i couldn't imagine myself anywhere else i'm not saying that because i couldn't go to uct but genuinely like the community of people that i found here the church that i found the like activities that i provide like i didn't know there's such a thing called guido until i came here like i like i've discovered so much like and what i like about it is that it's so close to my family members like my aunt is like 40 minutes away my, there's my uncle also in pretoria like it's so close to family so if i ever feel like it's too much you just need to rest i can go to my aunt my uncle and the area is like not too complicated so kind of like there's road bank if i want to watch a movie there's all those things but then yeah guys i'm so grateful to be here like i am truly grateful that that chose me that god made it align in a way that led me here so yeah, that is how I got into vets and if you want tips on like how I did well in matric, the seven things with all of those things, you can watch a video, I'll put it, I'll link it and yes, I think it's here, I'm not sure but then yeah, I'll link it there so you can just click on it, watch it if you want some tips. I know that you metric, uh, metric lens are going to write your, um, let's, let's your trial exams soon, so I just want to say all the best with the trial exams. Yeah, I remember I was still feeling, I was not feeling, okay, let me not deceive people, but I was not getting a distinction in English. But then, like, guys, um, just try your best, keep calm. If you want any tips, watch that video. If you feel like you need clearance on something, we just want to ask something else, message me on Instagram. Like, I'll put my Instagram here, but then message me on Instagram, don't be afraid. If you need any help, in any how, like, just message me but then a bunch of my resources are in that video anyways i'm rambling but then yeah i think this is where i'm going to end the video um yeah i feel like i'm um, where i need to be here in this i feel like i made the right decision coming here even though that's not my best choice it's still the best choice that i made so i don't have any regrets i hope you guys enjoy this video and i really had fun filming it yeah that's it
it don't forget to subscribe help me to reach 1k subscribers by the end of the month like comment share with your friends and all the best with your trial exams all the best you've got this just study study past papers guys past papers just do past papers and yeah that's all i have to share in this vlog and i'll see you guys in the next vlog